When State Senator Kevin Priola switched parties earlier this week, Republican to Democrat, Priola single-handedly made it a lot harder for Republicans to try and retake control of the State Senate. That's the politics of it. Let's look at what the balance of the State Senate means for the direction of Colorado, the impact on our lives. What would Democrats pass if they continue to have complete control versus what would split power accomplish? Here's politics guy Marshall Zellinger. One of the signature bills Colorado Democrats passed last year was to put existing abortion rights access into state law. And if Democrats stay in control at the legislature next year, they want to protect medical professionals helping patients who travel here from out of state for abortion access. There are Coloradans that could be wrapped up in that. And those are the doctors and the nurses and the providers. And those who I are who I, I know I have a priority in wanting to protect. For Democratic State Senate President Steve Fenberg to be in charge for another two years, he needs Democrats to win at least three of seven seats expected to be close on election night. Whether it's the climate crisis, the threats against our democracy, um, reproductive health access, I think those are the issues that are very clear. We do not move forward whatsoever if Republicans are in charge of one of the chambers. The split legislatures uh, kept the extreme elements from governing the entire middle that is Colorado. The last time Colorado had a split legislature, Democrats in control of the House and Republicans in control of the Senate, was 2017 and 2018, when Kevin Grantham was in charge of the Senate. That's the last thing I want on my epitaph, the last Republican president to the state Senate. We can look back at those years to see what type of bills ultimately make it through to the governor and which ones never had a chance. The majority of bills that passed in 2017 and 18 were not controversial, approving new license plates, for example, protecting kids from sexting and providing immunity for someone breaking into a hot car to rescue an animal. How do we make this thing functional? How do we make it work where um, enough people don't not like it. Certain bills get blocked. In 2018, the Republican-led Senate killed a red flag bill, which allowed certain people to ask a judge to temporarily take weapons from a person deemed a threat to themselves or others. The kind of red flag bill that passed the next year, with Democrats in control of both the House and Senate. I don't want to overlook the issues within the Democratic Party, especially in the Senate. If Democrats keep control, Democrats don't always see eye to eye. One issue Fenberg mentioned was water, which he sees as a key issue this year or coming up in the next legislative session. If there's a fight internally, it could be with rural and urban Democrats, or if the Republicans are in charge, you've got Republicans who have different mindsets on what to do with state water. I, one effect of Priola being kind of the moderate swing vote, first as a Republican and now as a conservative Democrat, is that if Democrats keep control, they can lose somebody on their far left and still pass legislation so long as they keep Priola and the rest of the folks. Sure, yeah, that's true. But he, I feel like that worked better when he was a Republican and you could like attract from the other side. You still, if it's 1817 and you lose one of your own, then you still have to attract someone from the other side. If it's That's 1916 true. and you lose one of your own and you still have Priola, then you're good at 1817 and you can still move forward. This is why people get to decide these things in November. Marshall, thank you. So if State Senator Priola and his switch from Republican to Democrat ends up being the deciding vote in who controls the Senate after November, expect a battle royale in the recall to get him out of office. I've got a real question, though, about just how much energy, enthusiasm, and money either side will be willing to spend on this if Democrats end up with a more comfortable margin after Election Day. The Republicans organizing the recall against Priola have said this week they are going forward even if taking him out doesn't win them back control of the Senate. Democrats told us today they'll defend Priola even if his vote is not needed to keep Democrats in the majority. Even if it isn't a deciding seat, we would have his back. Um, there's no question he, he is part of our party. Um, he uh, supports us, we support him. We will defend anybody who is targeted with an unfair uh, recall effort. We'll see. I mean, if, if Priola is one of a few extra votes in a Democratic majority, will wealthy Republican donors really pour in the cash that would be needed for a recall rather than just trying to win Priola's seat in 2014? On the flip side of this, if Democrats don't have to have Priola to maintain their majority in the Senate, are Democrats really going to rally to defend a legislator who disagrees with them on all kinds of stuff? I mean, he's anti-abortion access, he's pro-gun rights, very typical conservative in a lot of ways. Both sides tell us they're going to do it.
Recall is on, full steam ahead. Like I said, we'll see.